in the slammer. 35 years inside with Noel Razor Smith. Hello and welcome to this very first look at In the Slammer, 35 years inside with Noel Razor Smith, where we explore some of the ins and outs of what really happens in a life of crime. My name's Elliot Frisby and joining me each podcast is Noel Razor Smith, a former bank robber who in his time as a criminal committed over 200 bank robberies. He also has 58 convictions against him for various charges, including armed assault. Noel has spent 35 years in prison over the course of his life, and now a reformed character, he bears all with me about what it was like being a criminal, doing time, and shares stories about being inside that we wouldn't usually get to hear. Series 1 will open your eyes as Noel talks to me about how the prison system treated inmates, court trials, smuggling, learning to trust people, and the impact mental health and drugs had on the inmates. This is the podcast that will bring you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth as you find out what life is really like in the slammer. Here's a taster of what's to come. What he'd done was he grabbed this finger and then he twisted it hard until it snapped. I actually heard it snap and I became unconscious and I don't know how long I was out for it. It was probably just a minute and I I woke to him slapping me around the face and now the guy was on my other arm and had my other hand and was this trying isn't to the police though, is this it? Is in, yes, this is the police. These right. are undercover police officers. What oh. they used to do was, and I, I've no doubt they still do it, is burglary squads in the 70s would go out in plain clothes, dressed as builders, and they would drive unmarked vans and they would cruise the streets looking for people who might be up to burglary, residential areas. So it was actually the police that grabbed hold of us and beat and tortured us and made us admit to all these uh, things that we hadn't done, which is... You know, it kind of turned everything I knew about the police up to that moment on its head. Where I'd thought of them as the good guys, the goodies, suddenly they were the baddies. And I had to consider myself as a goodie because it was happening to me, if you know what I mean. So that, to me at 14, that made being a criminal acceptable. Well, suddenly all your safety is gone because if you think, if you need some help, let's just say you're going for a bit of stuff, who do you call? You call the police. But you had that taken away. So you must have felt really quite alone at, at that point. I did actually, and you know, one of the things about it was I eventually ended up being put into juvenile prisons, the short, sharp shock. But when I actually got to these juvenile jails, I realized that I wasn't alone, that all these other guys from different areas were kind of like the same as me, if you like. Mm. They had had the same experiences. They hated the police. They were in their immature ways rebelling against what had happened to them. So then I didn't feel so alone. Once I got into a company with these guys, I realised I wasn't a strange weirdo, you know, that it was happening to. I was, I was kind of normal. If you were to have a guess, you maybe even know the answer, why do you think the police would have done that to you? To be honest with you, Elliot, they had been doing it for years. It's nothing new. I mean, they still do it now. Um, Not so much at the moment, because you've got to remember that was pre-PACE, which was the uh, Police and Criminal Evidence Act 1984. And anything that the police said in, in, in a court was taken as gospel, especially by magistrates. So they could do no wrong. There wasn't any of the miscarriages of justice that that were exposed later. The police were kind of seen as straight, upstanding members of the community and um, guardians of the community, when in fact, they were just human. They were just human guys. And if they went out for a drink at lunchtime and they see a couple of scruffy schoolboys and thought, you know what, let's get these to admit to a few crimes, that was kind of standard. In the 70s, getting beaten by the police was actually standard. I mean, loads of my pals had it. Even people who weren't really criminals, they'd get stopped by the SPG. And, you know, the least they could hope for was a slap in the face. Who are you going to tell? So would you say that that moment there, if you think back to that moment, would you say that was the starting point of, I mean, because how many prisons have you been in 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 total? Coming up to 50? Uh, Yeah, coming up to 50 prisons. Um, Would you say that that was the starting point of that journey? Definitely. It was. I I, I can point to that with... with, um, you know, with certainty that before that point, I was quite pro-police and and pro, you know, um, uh, pro-law and order in my little way, as much as I could be at that age. But that completely, that threw me. The world turned upside down then. The police were not the good guys. The police were the guys who were beating and torturing me and fitting me up for crimes I hadn't committed. It was a shock, you can imagine. And after that, I just see the world through a different lens. That was, for me, that was it, the police. 
There's plenty more to come on the In The Slammer podcast, so be sure to follow us online. Just search for In The Slammer on YouTube and Facebook, where you can watch extended footage of the podcast of Noel and myself in conversation. Subscribe now to hear first-hand accounts of what life was really like as a criminal and In The Slammer. You've been listening to In The Slammer with Noel Razor-Smith, hosted by Elliot Frisbee, music by Andrew Stamp, produced by Chris Byland, recorded at Monkey Nut Audiobooks. For more information, visit the In The Slammer Facebook page or visit monkeynutuk.com. If you have a question or want to contact Noel Razor-Smith, then please email InTheSlammer at monkeynutuk.com.